Hello, love. Welcome back. It's a rainy weekend here in California, so I'm just taking it slow. When it's raining, I love to curl up with my kitty, Zoe, who's the best snuggler. And another thing I love to do is mixed media art journaling. It's a cozy, introspective way to spend the afternoon inside. So I thought I would give you a little decorative paper show and tell today, as well as a few tips for working with different types of papers for your mixed media projects. Last week, I finished a new mixed media class called Let Go and Layer with Mixed Media Journaling. And I'll leave more information on that at the end of this video. And part of my process for art journaling is paper collage. So I got out my big paper stash for the class and dug through that. And while I was doing that, I came across a gift that I received recently from a friend who works at the art supply store that I used to work at. So the last time I went in and shopped, I was surprised with this amazing stack of old paper samples that she had set aside for me. And they're from a paper company called Black Ink. Apparently the store was refreshing their catalog binder from this company and was getting rid of all these gorgeous paper samples. And they decided to give them to me. So that was so amazing and I really appreciate it. So I hadn't really opened it up yet to look through it closely one by one. So I decided that I would do that with you. So hopefully this is something that interests you. I could thumb through decorative papers all day, so I'm really excited to get into it. Most of these papers are handmade with natural fibers. They're absolutely gorgeous and I thought I would just flip through them while we chat. I've always loved collage. When I was a kid, I would cut the animals out of National Geographic magazines and then glue them back together with all of their bodies switched. So I'd make elephants with frog eyes and butterfly wings and birds with octopus tentacles and so on. So when I worked at the art store, when the papers would get delivered, I was always drawn to them but there were so many that I would get a bit overwhelmed. And we didn't stock all of these papers, but I do remember a lot of them and have collaged with a few of them in the past. So it's nice to look through these samples with the labels on them. I used to have to crouch down and squint at the paper labels on the shelf when I would restock the full sheets. And it wasn't that comfortable. So I never took the time to really pay attention to the details about where they came from and what they were called, and now I can. And I think it's going to help me as I move forward and pick out new papers. I have noticed some characteristics when I've collaged with different papers in the past, so I thought I would just share some tips with you based on my own little observations that I've made over time. So number one, acrylic matte medium is your friend. You can glue with it, seal papers over the top with it, it dries clear, and you can mix it to the acrylic paint to make the paint more transparent. Number two, natural papers. In my experience, they lay down a little bit nicer than synthetic papers Glossy magazine cutouts especially ripple up and make collaging more tricky. Number three, cardstock papers will sometimes bow a little bit when you glue them down. So you have to work with them for a little bit longer to get that good seal. And I think of it as massaging the paper into the surface until it relaxes. Number four, many papers have a grain to them and have different ways that they like to rip. And I rip papers a lot when I collage. And I've noticed that sometimes they have a mind of their own. So that's when I get out the scissors. Number five, 
papers that have a lot of rough texture or embossing are so much fun to paint over the top of and you can get a lot of really cool effects depending on how much paint you use and how you apply it and it's really fun to experiment with. Number six, tissue papers. Tissue papers will become very transparent when you glue them down. They almost melt into the background. And if they have a printed pattern or a thicker texture on them, that will show up. So you can have a lot of fun with that, but don't expect thin, wispy papers to stay opaque with wet medium. And number seven, the more collaging you do, the more people will begin to give you their secondhand papers. Over the years, I've received some very nice scores of paper from my friends and family and colleagues who were decluttering and wanted someone to put their old paper supplies to good use. So hopefully this inspired you to try out some collage and help you make more informed decisions about selecting papers during your practice. And I'm so excited to get into my next mixed media project. Flipping through pretty papers has definitely released some creative endorphins in my brain. And they're so tactile and rich with possibilities. So in a moment, I'm going to give you more information about my latest mixed media class. But before I do, I just want to thank you so much for being here. I would love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And let me know in the comments what were your favorite papers that you saw in this video. Did you like the marble papers? Or the pressed flower papers? Or something else? Let me know in the comments. And also let me know if you like this type of content and if there's something that you'd like me to talk about in the future. I really love making these videos for you and your participation helps more than you can believe to grow our little community. So until next time, happy painting and collaging. Much love. The best part of making art, in my opinion, is simply playing. That's when the magic happens, when time and space fall away and you're fully immersed in your craft. Experts even say that when you get in the zone, your health improves because your body and mind are relaxed and creative. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an artist and instructor, but what I really do is help people gain creative confidence. One of the best ways to play and improve your art is to practice in an art journal. That's because it's for your eyes only and you can totally let go. In this class, Let Go and Layer with Mixed Media Journaling, I will gently guide you through a process that allows you to play and experiment with acrylic paint, paper collage, and expressive mark making. In the lessons, I'll share techniques for how to start on a blank page and create an intriguing mixed media background. You'll watch over my shoulder step by step as I create a focal point and embellish the journal spread with playful marks. And finally, I'll show you how to seal the pages so they won't stick together and rip, which is a common problem with acrylic journals. I love this practice because it's absolutely foolproof. If you don't like something, you just let go of it and cover it up with another layer. This class is right for you if you wanna learn how to loosen up and treat yourself to a soul nourishing journal practice. It's valuable for all levels of experience, even if you've never painted before. I won't ask you to draw or paint anything from scratch. We'll be working with papers for our imagery, so all you have to do is play with color and collage. When you finish, you'll have a visual journal entry with beautiful insights that will keep you coming back for more. So are you ready to let go? I can't wait.